Welcome back to Stormwatch. Let's see what's coming up on this, our special Halloween episode. This week, we visit a couple of MATC students in a fight for pumpkin carving supremacy. And Stormwatch takes an in-depth look at Suya's food drive right here on the MATC campus to help the less fortunate be prepared to donate. And we take a sneak peek inside a classroom in the hotel and hospitality department and learn what inspires the students to pursue this field. But lastly, we go and take a sneak peek at the Wisconsin Fairgrounds, one of the top haunted houses in the nation. All this and more on this episode of Stormwatch. <laughs> It's Stormwatch with Tanner Burke. Yes, I'm your host, or should I say, a self portrait of your host, Fancy Man Tanner Burke. Halloween has always been one of my favorite times of year. The leaves are changing, there's a crisp bite of autumn in the air. And I get to break out the old French maid outfit. I mean, uh, Iron Man costume. Yeah, that's it. We're starting our Halloween spooktacular with a look at Suya, the Student Wisconsin Asso Education Association, and student producer Andrew Suggett looks at how a group of students at MATC are trying to make the holiday a little less scary by providing food for those in need. But first, Joshua Nylon shows us a pumpkin carving competition between a couple of MATC students. And I have to warn you, it gets a little cutthroat. Hey there, this is uh, Chet and Ted from MATC. Today we're going to be having a little pumpkin carving competition and showing you how to carve a jack-o'-lantern at the same time. Ted, why don't you show them what they're going to need? Yeah, no problem. See, if you want to win, you're going to need a Sharpie. You know, draw your design, make your design real intricate, always use a Sharpie. You're also going to need a knife to cut the jack-o'-lantern. But you could always use a smaller knife for more intricate details if you wanted to win. All right. And uh, which I will be winning. Um, anyway, this, this spoon is to get all the seeds out of there, get all the muck out of there, make your design, make it real neat. All right, now that we showed you what we need, we're gonna finish drawing these openings in the top to be able to get your seeds out. See, what I'm doing is I'm gonna make a circular pattern, traditional, smart, safe. All right, now that we've got that drawn, you're going to want to cut your top out. You're going to want to cut this on an angle so the top stays there nicely. Now that you got your lid open, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to take it open, you know, cut the inside of this off. You're going to want a garbage bag for this stuff. All right, so once you got your pumpkin cut open, once my, my buddy over there cuts his open, you, you, these seeds are useful. They're not completely useless. You can always just throw them at your friend, or you know, you could bake them in the oven with a little bit of salt, and uh, yeah, they're pretty tasty. What you're gonna wanna do is cut them all out. And my approach is always take your time and do things right. It always looks better, and you know, when it's a uh, rush, you can see the, the results of it. What you're gonna wanna do is, Scoop all this membrane out. A little messy process here. You want to pull your sleeves back. All right, after you get it all cleaned out here, it gets a little messy, I'll tell you. If you get it cleaned out, you're going to want to start drawing your face pattern. Well, looks like I'm done here. Looks like I beat you in that part of the competition yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're done, we're done. Now, it's gonna be up to you guys to vote to see who won. We won't know until later. You can always vote for me, Chet, or, you know, Ted's the loser, whichever one you like. You can vote for us at the 2013 Pumpkin Carving Contest, MATC, at gmail.com. We'll be waiting for your votes. Hopefully, me, Chet, is the winner of the victory. And, uh, That'll be concluding our pumpkin cover competition of this year. 
So on that note, I'll be saying bye. This is Chet, and I'm Ted. We're out of here. Suya has put together this fall a harvest food drive, which will benefit many, many people in our community. The Student Wisconsin Education Association is taking time this fall to collect food donations, but also to spread information about their goals. Suya is a pre-professional student-led organization consisting mainly of future educators, teachers, who are open to everybody. In the past, we have held hygiene drives that we have donated to MPS. Um, this year with the food drive, we'll be donating to the Hunger Task Force. They're an amazing nonprofit organization here in Milwaukee that will take whatever we are able to collect in our donation boxes and spread it throughout the community to those that really need it. I was happy when they decided to choose the food drive because I think it, there's a connection there. There's people in our society that have needs because it's the fall season and the fall season leads up to some of the major holidays that we have uh, this year. And I thought that the food drive was an appropriate event for the students to, to actually take on. We have drop-off boxes around the school um, at various other student organizations that we got involved with. The Latino uh, Association, they have one. Um, the Multicultural Organization also has one. We have them throughout the school. We have flyers all over. Um, and if you'd like to donate any non-perishable food items, we appreciate it. There are so many amazing benefits to joining SWEA. Um, one is that you are going to get help from the best advisors in this program to help you finish your educational foundations track here at MATC. And we are always looking to recruit new members. Come visit us in M289 if you have any questions or if you'd like to donate food or participate in any of the wonderful things we do for the community. It's great for our organization. The Harvest Food Drive runs through November 14th, and SWEA will be accepting both food and cash donations in the S Building, second floor atrium, on November 7th and 14th from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Coming up next on Stormwatch, Adam Lilly visits the Hotel and Hospitality Department to see how the students are preparing to find a place in the workforce. After that, Warren Barth visits with the MATC Animation Club to find out how they are celebrating this Halloween. Let's take a look. Okay, are we ready? Beverly Johnson is a teacher here at MATC in the Hotel and Hospitality Management Program. As a main instructor in the program, she teaches several of the major courses and serves as a mentor for aspiring hotel administrators. Located at downtown campus, the Hotel and Hospitality Management Program is a two-year associate degree program that teaches the ins and outs of hotel management. Interested in the curriculum, I decided to find out more about the program. What is this program about? We do a lot with tourism as far as hospitality would it encompass, which is making someone feel comfortable when they travel away from their home. What are some of the key courses in the Hotel and Hospitality Program? Some of the key courses are accounting, um, which we teach them how to manage the company's money. Um, the other key courses are supervision because they work with so many um, people from different cultures and ethnic background. And another key course I would say would be the technical component of front office operation, housekeeping, um, and building operation. What do students get here at MATC that they can't from other schools? I think the relationship, the direct relationship with the student <laughs> is what they get here at MATC. I think also the other advantage is, is that most of the instructors have worked in the industry and some of them are still currently working in the industry. So they are up to date with all the new technologies. So I think they get a lot from that as well. What are some of the possible careers that await students after graduating? A couple of career opportunities. Um, because the hotel is so vast. Um, you can work in the front of the house as well as the back of the house. And what I mean by that, the front of the house is where you have direct contact with guests. 
So be it front desk, be it the restaurant, the lounge. Um, back of the house would be um, indirect contact, which is um, like housekeeping or working in the kitchen like the chefs or stewarding where they set up banquet rooms or accounting, human resource. While sitting in on a housekeeping operations class, some of the students shared their plans and goals for after graduation. One day I open up a bed and breakfast somewhere up north. That's my key goal. I graduate in December. Looks like I'll be taking over a GM position for a bar on the north side, uh, east, uh, east side on North Avenue or opening up my own. So a hotel is almost like a small city because you can get all experiences um, and management that your soul desires. So it's a lot of fun. For everyone here at Stormwatch, happy Halloween. It's that time of year again. Time for pumpkins, witches, monsters, and other scary things. It's Halloween. What are MATC students doing for Halloween? Stormwatch spoke to two members of MATC's animation club to find out their plans and thoughts about Halloween. Uh, my costume for this Halloween is actually going to be a, uh, a lumberjack. Um, and I have a tiny can of axe, which is going to be my axe for the lumberjack. This year for my costume and my friends as well, we're all planning on going as uh, Haitian Loa gods. And I plan on being Baron Samadhi, the okay. voodoo god of death. I think the scariest thing I ever saw on a Halloween was uh, me and my family went to a haunted house when I was about six years old. and um, It was a really old sort of Victorian house and it was very creepy, scary. It was all done up for Halloween and it was sort of like a haunted house walkthrough thing. It was really cool and very scary at the same time. What I like best about Halloween is seeing how other people are cr so creative with their costumes. I do not trick or treat anymore, but I have to say my favorite candy when I was trick or treating would probably be the Reese's peanut butter cups because those are just amazing. When I Back when I trick-or-treated, my favorite candies were usually uh, Milky Ways, and I actually liked those popcorn balls that nobody else liked. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Thanks, Warren. Thinking about Halloween makes me realize something. I am a broke college student. <laughs> There's no way I can afford a costume. At least, that's what I used to think before I met our guest today. Liz Scheip is a local Milwaukee actress and costume designer. She is perhaps best known for her trilogy of Sherlock Holmes plays that just wrapped up at the Brumder Mansion. As a theater veteran, she is no stranger to a shoestring budget and is here to help translate that experience into how to find a Halloween costume, regardless of your budget. Liz, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> now, with your Sherlock Holmes trilogy, I heard your budget for your first show was a mere $75. How did you <laughs> costume an entire show with seventy-five dollars? Uh, yeah, roughly that was the budget, and it's it's tough. I mean, you you make a concession that you're gonna do a period piece, and then you go, oh no, I have to figure out how to do that, and then you can usually beg, borrow a lot of different uh, things from other theater companies in town, but a lot of the time that comes from just labor and your own labor okay. <laughs> and nobody else is going to do it. <laughs> so it's a lot of me sitting in my apartment sewing at 3 a.m. really bothering my roommate. Yeah, yeah. good. It's well, <laughs> and if, uh, so if you do end up actually going out and buying something, which I know, I mean, I was in the theater, I know that's a rarity in mm -hmm. the theater to actually go out and b purchase something. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you go, where do you shop to make your money Carry the furthest. For your a costumes. lot of vintage stores, vintage stores that are a bunch down Brady. Uh, that stuff can get pricier though. Mm -hmm. um, so usually just Goodwill, and you go to every Goodwill on the planet until yep. you find the thing you're looking for. <laughs> and sometimes you luck out, and sometimes you don't. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I was also informed that you do a photography series called Reconstructing Grimm, I where do. you reimagine uh, the classic fairy tales in the modern day. And uh, we actually have a picture of one where you updated the princess and the frog. 
Uh, can you tell us about how you were able to come up with some of these costumes and props on such a low budget? Oh yeah, um, a typical shoot is is gonna range as far as like maybe about twenty dollars to fifty dollars for every shoot. Um, if we have men that come on the shoot, if we have a male model, typically uh, we just pull stuff from their wardrobe. Men's wear is hard, don't like doing it, so I don't. <laughs> uh, women's wear, um, a little bit easier. You, again, shopping at Goodwill, you get curtain panels, you get um, old bedding, anything you can find and you rip it apart and you can sew it back together in something very fantastical. And it is, it's all, it comes down to labor. It's hard work, oh, yeah. but that's, that's where it boils down to. If you want something that looks fantastic, you have to spend the time on it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. <laughs> I spent a lot of time and a lot of money on my uh, my costume for the show today, as you can I tell. noticed. I, I was so impressed. Yeah, mm -hmm. made a stop at the thrift shop yesterday and picked God, up a dollar I, picture oh, frame. And, as a know, costumer, my heart Like I said, I'm a broke college student, as, as are many college students, if all of them across the country. <laughs> um, but on another note, what if, if you had to say your favorite costume, your favorite low-budget costume that you've ever worked on, Halloween or theater or not, what would that be? Oh, my favorite low-budget costume. And I, I can't take credit for this. Uh, this is actually a friend of mine. His name is Nick. And we went out last Halloween, and he just got a pair of sunglasses. And any time anybody asked him what he was, he'd just put on the sunglasses and go, you must not have read the book. Oh, that, that works every oh, time. Man. And then walk away. That's the nail. You, you just got to walk just away. Leave. You yep. just leave. All right. <laughs> well, Liz, I want to thank you again for joining us today. Uh, as soon as the show is over, I'm going to take this $5 right here and go find myself a costume. Coming up on Stormwatch, coming up on Stormwatch, David K gives us a look at a shady underground card game, but not the kind of card game you would expect. But first, student producer Ashley Pluger learns about the Halloween bash sponsored by the student government. Take it away, Ashley. We're having a Halloween bash. It's a great party. It's happening on October 31st. Yeah. Melissa Johnson is heading this particular event. She's storing it. She's done a lot of work. She's actually the student body vice president here at the downtown campus. Um, the event committee from the district student senate, what is collective student government of all the MATC campuses, and um, Adam Strozer, who is the chair of the events committee for district student senate. He's been doing this for, for some time now. Last year, there wasn't an event, um, and a year before, it did happen. And it was all right, but it wasn't enough advertising as it should be while we're here. But this one, I'm really feeling good about, really optimistic. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a DJ, live DJ, for all the good songs. Now, I know this is school, but don't worry. It's going to be fun. Good DJ. It's going to be a costume contest. There's actually one for the top dressed, the scariest, and I believe the sexiest. But there's three top categories you can win in for what costume you're going to have. It's $10 a ticket, so anybody can attend. Couples tickets are $18. Real reasonable. Again, when you come in, it's a free buffet, a caramel apple bar, and um, special signature drinks. You can buy tickets at the Student Life office on your respective campuses. The money goes back to student activity fees, which is a, 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 a large pot of money, which comes from the money that students pay to go to school here. Uh, we use it responsibly. We want to throw fun things for the students, educational. So this is obviously fun, and that is kind of going right back in the pot. It is going right back in. Keep your eyes really open, because there's going to be more events to come. It's going to be another party next spring. Um, there's other events happening on campus. We just did the um, texting while you're driving uh, last week. So it's a bunch of events happening. Come get involved. It's going to be awesome. You better come or you're going to feel left out. You don't want to see the pictures on Facebook and not be in the pictures. So we say, come on down. Have fun with it. Deal some new cards.
what is Batman's guilty pleasure? Birds. That's not funny. But flightless birds. You're out. What? You're out. What? to liven up the party. So, what never fails to liven up the party? Hot pockets. The Kool-Aid Man. Oh no. the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. Clearly, Flightless Birds was the best card in the entire game. Ah, well, they must have been jealous. After all, that young man is a handsome devil. To finish up today on Stormwatch, student producer Tyrone Bergeron, who we call Mother, paid a visit to the Waukesha Expo Center to take a look behind the scenes at the Wisconsin Fairgrounds. Come along with us if you dare. <laughs> Stormwatch celebrates Halloween week with a sneak peek behind the scenes at the number one rated haunted house in America, Wisconsin Fairgrounds. <laughs> well, behind the scenes, what happens on a given night for our show? All of our team come in, they look at a big whiteboard, it's their call board, so that they can see which haunted house they're assigned to that night and what their position is. After they have that information, then they run over to the costume trailer, they get suited up in their costume that's specific to that scene, and then they get their makeup done in the makeup room, and then they're really starting to develop and become into their character. Um, when I have makeup put on here, it can take anywhere from five minutes if we're in a bit of a hurry, to 25 minutes if we're getting a lot of detail work done. So I'm gonna be doing makeup on Liz today. We're gonna make her a creepy little doll. Um, the makeup is really important at the Haunted House. It gets the actors into character more than anything else. It's really more for the actors than for the patrons. So, we're going to start with a white base. And I emphasize the cheekbone and the jawline and the temples. And you turn towards me. And the bridge of the nose. Uh, in the haunted house, it's a really low light condition, so you want to do all of the blacks and whites really, really high contrast. Otherwise, all the detail gets lost because there's very, very little light inside of the haunted house. we get number one in the country, Must See Haunted House by Haunted Attraction Magazine. You know, I don't know, it's a very humbling experience that we receive such a prestigious award, but I'd like to say it's because of our team and how hard they work. We can build a gorgeous haunted house, and I think we have with all the detail, particularly if you look at the detail in Morgan Manor. However, it's really the people. People scare people. You are about to come face to face with a 300 pound Man-eating chicken, are you ready? And this 
enthusiasm is a little underwhelming, but I'm going to send you on anyway. Off you go, my pretties. Off you go. We're going to have people that are going to gross you out, that are going to startle scare you, and then we're going to have them that might make you cry or make you sad. We want you to feel a myriad of emotions when you're at the haunted house, and then we feel like we've done our job. People like to get frightened because it causes a rush of adrenaline that makes people feel good. Oh my god, it was scary and I awesome. I was scared, I couldn't let go of the person. Dark. I know. <laughs> and I would say go, like I was really scared and I didn't want to go. I almost ran back to my car because I didn't want to go. But I ended up having a lot of fun. Yeah. Good care. I like how everybody walks around and gets you when you're not expecting it. I almost had a heart attack. Terrifying. It was bad. Oh my god, it's terrifying. I hate clouds. I'm still <laughs> shaking. M-A-T-C, can you handle the fear? M-A-T-C, can you handle the fear? Of course you can, M-A-T-C. Wisconsin Fear Grounds are located at the Waukesha Expo Center. Show closes each evening when the last victim survives. Happy Halloween from Stormwatch. M-A-T-C, can you handle the fear? Well, I just soiled myself, which means we're about out of time this week for Stormwatch. I want to thank our guest, Liz Scheip, for spending some time with us today. Stay tuned next week for an in-depth look at the West Dallas campus and all the school and community have to offer. Until then, I'm Tanner Burke, and you are all my favorite.